Senator Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Director Burwell, welcome back. Um, thank you. Thank you for your testimony, and, and also thank you for spending some time uh, over the last year thank trying to work with, with us, with me, uh, trying to define the problem and, and try and mm -hmm. er, look at areas of agreement. Uh, I want to focus a little bit. I want to understand a little bit more about the difference between discretionary and mandatory spending in, in the proposed budget here. Uh, I want to focus on 2015, just so I get, get this, get a good understanding. Uh, the figures I have is that uh, you're proposing in 2015 $3.9 trillion of spending, whereas the CBO baseline would be about $3.78 trillion. So we're actually increasing the total spending, total outlays by about $118 billion over the CBO ba baseline. Is that about right? Uh, I think one of the things uh, that we would want to look at in terms of why and where those increases are or how things are accounted for, whether those are chimps, fees, any which, manner which, of things. Which is always a problem, right? Yes. So, so yes. anyway, I guess the question I have, so $118 billion, $56 billion increase in uh, discretionary spending, that leave about $68 billion in some way, shape, or form scoring uh, of mandatory spending. So the question I have is, uh, is the President or are you addressing the two-thirds of the budget? looking out 10 years in terms of the mandatory spending, in terms of reforming any of those types of programs? Because what I'm seeing in the first year is an increase in mandatory spending, even though you're claiming a $400 billion savings over 10 years, for example, in the health care spending. The mandatory savings uh, do come as one moves out in terms of when they grow. And those savings in terms of those types of mandatory savings, when they are structural, as we have had the opportunity to discuss, right. those are the ones you want because they grow in the out years. So, so, what, so what, what, what structural changes are you proposing in this budget to in that two-thirds of, of the budget? In terms of the even just the implementation of the Affordable Care Act, when the Congressional Budget mm -hmm. Office scored those numbers, in the second day, decade those numbers would be a trillion dollars. You are starting to get into that in terms of now we have moved from 2010, so our budget window starts to get those. The $400 billion is within uh, the window the, so, of changes that we do to Medicare, Medicaid, in terms of reducing those overarching health care costs. We're, we're getting really heart-wrenching emails and letters from our constituents. Their, their premiums are doubling and tripling. Their out-of-pocket maximums are, are increasing. They're making really heart-wrenching decisions, whether they have to quit a job so their income actually is lowered enough so they can qualify subsidies to just be made whole because they're increasing premiums. Uh, specifically, you mentioned that health care spending is coming down because of the Affordable Care Act. Can you point to one thing that is actually causing health care spending to decline because of the Affordable Care Act, which just kicked in? Uh, we have seen some of the changes in terms of some of the things that had been put in place in terms of incentives and spending in the Medicare space. Also, we have also seen it is both a quality measure. Um, but it is a cost measure. 130,000 fewer readmissions are occurring because of some of the standards that have been put in. Okay. Um, as you are well aware, as, as we were meeting uh, over the year, I, I was really concerned about a 30-year budget window uh, because we really have that demographic problem of baby boom generation uh, retiring at the rate of 10,000 people per day. Uh, have you looked any further in terms of the 30-year problem that we are facing? I know we could never come to agreement in terms of what that 30-year uh, deficit would be. Have, have you given any, any further thought to that or done any you more know, work on that? One of the things that when we think about those out-year numbers that I think is one of the most challenging, and you actually even see it in the 10-year window, is the question of the uncertainty when you get in those out-years in terms of the economic pro projections. And one of the things I think that is most challenging about those out-year numbers is we know what affects these numbers dramatically are the underlying economics, and whether it is the growth rate, the interest rates, any of those, and the level of uncertainty. And so we have focused our attention on trying to get the problem contained in those 10-year windows. Continue to think about the out-year windows, because that is when some of these very important costs come to bear. One of the things we do know is the demographic bubble that you mentioned, in terms of that Social Security, in the 10-year window, we are in the middle of some of the height of that. And so hopefully that will start to come well, down. Well, speaking of Social Security, we are taking a look at that, and that is probably the best actuarial math we have. We are looking at between 13 and $15 trillion more in benefits being paid out over the next 30 years uh, versus payroll tax being collected. That is that's, that's pretty tough, uh, uh, some pretty tough numbers to look at in Social Security. The latest ultimate fiscal scenario, CBO, when you take the percentage GDP and convert those in dollars shows a 30-year deficit total of about 107, $127 trillion. So those were way larger than any projections we were talking to, certainly in our, our discussions. 
talking about Social Security, because I, I tried to get you to answer this uh, in your confirmation hearings, now I have Doug, Doug Elmendorf. The trust fund holds about $2.6 trillion worth of uh, bonds, U.S. bonds, right? Mm -hmm. And the Treasury has a $2.76 trillion liability because of those bonds, right? Mm -hmm. When you consolidate the federal government, what, what happens to the $2.76 trillion asset versus the $2.76 trillion liability? For the, for the federal government, that nets to what? I think, it, it the, net, question, net, it, I think the question is, is whether those numbers are actually numbers that net in terms of uh, well, you, if one takes a balance, state, uh, you know, a balance sheet and an income statement, you don't, the numbers, the well, way the numbers well, are well, made, but they what do the trust fund does is represents those claims and what has been paid in. What the unified deficit does is represents what we owe. Both of those are relevant, important, uh, tr part of transparent representations that are important. So I, I would refer you to your own, to OMB's publication that says that transaction nets to zero, and I'd also refer you to Doug Elmendorf's testimony where he also admitted that, yeah, you have an asset offset by li liability, and that nets to zero. Uh, thank you, Director. Thank you, Madam Chair.